broadcast, everyone. We're joined by our senior counsel for global affairs and the former Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo. And um, Secretary Pompeo, we, we, our ACLJ action uh, has been working on the situation with the World Health Organization, um, expanding its role. Of course, the Biden administration put us right back into the WHO after your administration uh, took us out of it. And it would give great uh, authority to the director general of the World Health Organization, uh, that's got us very, very concerned, uh, especially identifying anything as a health concern. And we know how broad that can be interpreted. And, of course, China has a huge role in that. I, I wanted to get your sense of that issue first with, with this expanding WHO matter. Well, my judgment was and my recommendation to the president, which he, he ultimately adopted, it was a pretty good consensus on our team, was that the World Health Organization is not looking out for its actual mission, that is the prevention of pandemics, but rather had become a political tool. We saw the current leader, Dr. Tedros, uh, become part of the Chinese Communist Party's propaganda campaign. So we wanted we wanted not to try to reform the WHO, which has been done, Jay, for, for decades. We've tried to reform the World Health Organization. We concluded you, you couldn't trust them, you couldn't rely on them, and they couldn't perform their central function. And so to give more power to them, to give more capacity to make decisions about What's the pandemic? What's the response? What should we shut down? Is something that is deeply, deeply inconsistent with America's interests. The Biden administration decided to rejoin the WHO thinking they could fix it. Um, I bet they fail at that. And to the extent they sign up for a deal that gives them more power and more authority and denies American sovereignty and, and reduces freedom for American leaders, that's something that's inconsistent with our Constitution and ought not to be done. Yeah, we're working on it aggressively. Jordan, go ahead. You know, Secretary Blinken today, the Secretary of State, uh, in your former position, gave a speech on China. And he, he basically outlined this, hey, we're not in a Cold War with China. Um, we're not in that kind of competition with China, really playing down. But on the other hand, we had our president, President Biden, in uh, the region in South Korea uh, and talk about uh, backing uh, Taiwan um, with military action, with U.S. military action. So I, I think that, again, who are we supposed to believe? Is it Secretary Blinken who says you know, things are chill with China, we're trying to calm things down, it's not a second Cold War? Or do we believe President Biden, who sounds like he's putting us on a path to war? <laughs> Jordan, there's a couple points there. First, if, if you're confused, Jay, if you're confused, you should know I'm confused. That means that the whole world doesn't understand what American policy is with respect to the Chinese Communist Party. That is bad. That means our friends won't trust us and our adversaries won't fear us when it comes to dealings with China. And this will give Xi Jinping and his uh, autocratic dictatorship the capacity to do an awful lot of harm to the United States. So I'm confused, Jordan. I can't answer your question precisely with who to believe there. Uh, but second, I, I've now had a chance to read most of the uh, statements that Blinken put out this morning. You should contrast it with what uh, his predecessor, me, said at the Nixon Library just a couple years back. I think what, what the Biden administration misses is they don't reflect, they don't acknowledge the profound negative manifestations of the CCP's malign and evil actions. They they misunderstand it. They think we can go along and get along. It, it sounded like something that Americans would have said in the 70s, 80s, or 90s. This is, this is not your grandpa's Chinese Communist Party. These folks mean business for the United States, and we have to stand up to them. We're, we can't simply talk about out-competing them. We have to make sure that we confront them in the very same way that we did the evil nature of the Soviet Union. I want to take a call, uh, Secretary Pompeo. This is a great call coming in from California from Tim. Tim, go ahead. You're on the air. Thank you for taking my call. Why does the Biden administration want to take the United States and make it look more like China? Because that's what China is doing, the exact same thing that the World Health Organization wants to do to the United States. Well, listen, I, I, I am concerned about this. And, and Secretary Pompeo, I remember this. When you first joined us and the first conversation we had in these studios when you were down here with us, um, we talked about the threat of China and how significant it is. We, I, I don't think we could overstate that. I mean, it is a real threat to the United States. A multi-pronged intentional threat from a nation state with 1.4 billion people, a powerful military, and an enormous economy. Uh, no, they have both the intention and the capability to undermine our Western way of life. And so that's why I, I, Tim call makes so much sense to me. Uh, we, we have to confront them economically. We can't let them steal millions and millions of jobs in the United States. All of the hard work 
Uh, we call it intellectual property. This is really the hard work, the sweat of Americans who were creative and created property that was valued. The Chinese just stole it. They then foisted a, a virus on us that's now killed over a million Americans. They're holding over a million of their religious minority in the West in something that looks and feels much like concentration camps. This is the nature of this regime, to think that you're going to just find places where you can cooperate and get along and you can kick this can down the road for another decade is inconsistent with the challenge that the CCP presents to us today. Jordan? You you know, Secretary Pompeo, something I thought was most troubling in Secretary Blinken's remarks was that he brought up the genocide in China, ongoing uh, of their Muslim population in Western China. He brought up their human rights abuses. But then he said this, I want to read the quote. Uh, He raises those issues, quote, not to stand against China, but to stand up for peace, security, and dignity. I mean, to me, that is such empty words. When you call out a country, which he initially does, for engaging in a genocide against a, a particular class of people, and as a human rights abusive country, but then says, I'm not doing this to call out China. I'm doing it for the greater world. I mean, to me, that's just to, it just shows that this this two sided China approach that doesn't make any sense to any American. And as you said, makes no sense to our allies either. Jordan, this has frankly been bipartisan policy since the 70s. So uh, this isn't a political uh, that kind of strategically inconsistent statement that that kind of state department gobbledygook uh, doesn't doesn't get it right it doesn't help the american people understand the threat so that we can begin to mobilize against it i remember too jordan when 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 i closed down the chinese consulate in houston texas they were conducting the largest spying operations i think ever conducted against the united states uh from that very facility this was at scale it tells you that this challenge is real it's upon us and to to make a statement, this sort of like uh, you'd hear from the U.N. Human Rights Commission at the United Nations uh, is not consistent with how America needs to confront China. This is real, Jordan. It, it impacts uh, ordinary Americans all across the country, from my home state in Kansas to, to where you all are in Tennessee. Uh, this is real and serious. And to to sort of flip the storyline says, well, it's bad, but, you know, we're, we're not going to do anything about it. Uh, it, it doesn't help our friends. As we're trying to build out alliances in the region, they're going to say America's not serious, and they're not going to accept any risk if they don't think America will lead and America is serious. That's uh, former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, our Senior Counsel for Global Affairs. As always, Mike, thanks for being with us. We appreciate it. Look forward to having you on again uh, next week.